Hey friends, my name is Oleg, this is Mr. Bond, welcome back to the YouTube channel. In today's video we're going to do a full review of Polyot Sturmanski. This has been one of my affordable grill watches. I know a lot of people will say uh, grill watches can't be affordable because they have to be unattainable, but sometimes grill watch can be affordable but hard to get, and this watch was hard to get in a good condition. Finally, I was able to find one a few months ago, about 3-4 months ago. I bought it from eBay, I actually did an unboxing video for this watch. That video can be found on the YouTube channel, I will also leave it linked in the description below. The way I'm going to do this video is going to be done kind of in two parts. Uh, the first part is going to be the close-up shots of the watch and the actual review part. Uh, the second part, closer to the end, I'm going to talk about how does the watch stack up against other watches in my collection. How do I feel about this watch now, three months later? And also, I did get the watch serviced, how much I paid for the cleaning and the servicing of the watch, and the rest of it. So, let's get started with the review first. Let's begin with the case dimensions. The watch has a diameter of 37.7 millimeters, a lug plug distance of 45 millimeters, a lug width of 18 millimeters, and a thickness of only 13.3 millimeters, including that boxed, domed acrylic crystal. Here's what the watch looks like on my 7.5 inches or 20 centimeters wrist. I really like the fit of this one. I know it's a bit on the smaller side for modern watch standards, but you have to remember this watch is based on vintage watches, so 37 millimeters, 38 millimeters for a vintage type of watch is quite large. The watch also wears thinner because a lot of the thickness of this watch comes from the crystal. On the wrist, the crystal doesn't appear to be that tall, so the watch overall has the effect of being thinner. I really like how this one looks on the wrist. The only negative I have with the fit is that 18 millimeter lug width. I wish it was 20. With the 20 millimeter lug width, I think the design would look a little bit more balanced and it would be a little bit easier to buy NATO and leather straps for this timepiece. I currently have it on this cheap leather strap that I bought off of eBay. Uh, nothing special, I think I paid like eight or nine dollars for this strap. It gets the job done and I think it looks pretty good with this watch. Uh, the weight of the watch on this leather strap is about 73 grams, so it is fairly comfortable. As you can tell, currently the watch is not ticking. I let the power reserve drain on purpose so I can show you the hand winding motion. The crown at the 3 o'clock position does the crown to wind the movement. Give it a few winds, give it a little bit of a shake, and the watch starts ticking. Uh, sometimes with these older watches you have to give it a shake so uh, the balance wheel starts going. Uh, not a bad movement in this one, actually the movement is based on the Belgeux 7734. If you remember I did a review of Paliot Blue Angels or Paliot Ruslan I think it was actually. It was a watch that I borrowed from a friend of mine, Bishal, and I really liked that watch. It was very similar looking to Breitling Navy Timer and that watch had exactly the same movement as the movement in this one. Caliber P3133 manual wind movement. It has 42 hours of power reserve, 23 joules, beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour, it is shock resistant, and quite a nice movement, as I said, it's based on the Valjoux 7734 movement. The legend goes that uh, Soviets either stole some parts or bought some machinery parts from Swiss manufacturer and uh, reassembled their own movement. Uh, the two movements are very similar, some parts are interchangeable between the two movements, but there are also quite a few parts that are proprietary to Paliot movements, so some parts could be replaced with the Valjoux parts, some parts can't be. Uh, repairing these watches could get a little tricky, so if you are looking for one, I would strongly suggest you buy one in a working condition, as opposed to buying one and then trying to fix one. Fixing the watch could cost you more than how much you actually paid for the watch and how much you can get for the watch if you were to flip it in the future. It has a stainless steel case with some pretty good alternating finishes. We have a brushed finish on top of the case and a polished finish on the lugs. As you can see the case kind of separates itself into the main portion of the case and the lugs. The lugs stick out like little teeth. It also has a polished finish on the sides of the case. I mean the finish is not spectacular. It's uh, quite rough if we're being fair but pretty good for this type of a watch. A screw down case back. The case back mechanism is quite uh, unique to this watch. Uh, so uh, Vostok watches have the same mechanism. Basically you have this outer ring that you screw in place. 
and this back cover is just uh, pushing itself against the rubber gaskets the tighter you get the ring in so you don't screw in the whole of the case back you just screw in this ring that pushes the case back into place a unique mechanism to Soviet era watches. The watch only has 30 meters of water resistance. This is a chronograph and chronographs are notorious for having very little water resistance because there are quite a few openings in the case for where the water can get in. It also has a nice boxed acrylic crystal. It's a nice looking crystal. It's a nice design feature of this watch and something that sets it apart. Vintage inspired retro looking. I really like how this crystal looks. Now of course acrylic crystals are a lot softer than sapphire or even mineral crystals. They're a lot more scratch prone. The good news is they are also very easy to polish out. You can just buy some poly wash and get all those scratches out very easily and keep your crystal nice and clear for a long time. I'm not exactly sure of the age of this watch when the watch was made I think it's around 2010 to 2012. The Moscow watch factory closed down in 2012. That's the factory that was making Palot watches. Now a little bit of a history for you. So Moscow watch factory started in 1930s. Then in 1964, they produced their first Palot watch. In 1970s, they started exporting a lot of their watches to the rest of the world, which was very unique for a Soviet era company to be exporting watches uh, outside of USSR. And around 1990s, early 2000s, they started reproducing some of their more iconic watches, like this one right here, Poliot Sturmansky, as well as their other very desirable chronograph called Akian or Ocean Chronograph. It's a little bit weird to see two crowns on opposite sides. So as I demonstrated earlier, the crown at the 3 o'clock position, that's the crown to operate the movement. The crown at the 9 o'clock position, that's the crown to operate the inner rotating bezel. That's how it works. It's a bidirectional bezel, meaning it both it turns in both directions. And the resistance on this crown is, uh, is quite strong. So it's not a very easy crown to grip or to turn. To some people that might be a negative, to me that's actually a positive. It would drive me crazy if this bezel were to turn by itself as you wear the watch on the wrist. Just think of something like a Seiko Alpinist. One of my big negatives with that watch is that the crown for the inner rotating bezel is too easy to turn. So as you wear the watch throughout the day, your inner rotating bezel turns. Not the case with this watch. This crown has quite a bit of resistance, so it's not a very easy bezel to turn. And for sure, it will not be turning by itself as you wear the watch. Now, these pushers here, of course, are the chronograph pushers. The pusher at the top, that's to start the chronograph, like so. The chronograph goes up to 30 minutes. Something that I like about this watch are the overall coloring and the design styling choices of this watch. So we have this blue seconds hand for the main timekeeping, and then we have the red seconds hand for the chronograph. We also have this black minutes hand for the chronograph. Quite nice, and it's also nice to distinguish the main timekeeping seconds hand from the rest of the watch. I like when chronographs do that. Nice texture on the chronograph subdials. They have these concentric circles going in and they play with the light mm. really well. And now, uh, one thing about vintage chronographs or older chronographs is that you want them to be reset not too far away from that zero mark. So if let's say the seconds hand is somewhere here, I wouldn't suggest you reset it because with the momentum, when the seconds hand snaps back into place, it can actually break the pinion or crack the pinion and it's very expensive to repair. So if you have a vintage chronograph, try to reset it closer to that zero o'clock position. So as you, I demonstrated earlier, you can start it and you can reset it. And this uh, mm -hmm. pusher here at the four o'clock position, well, that's to reset it back to zero. It's of course a flyback chronograph, mm -hmm. meaning the seconds hand flies back into place very quickly. We also have a date wheel by the mm -hmm. uh, six o'clock position. Now this watch doesn't have a quick set date. Uh, another annoying part about mm -hmm. this watch, another negative, other than the little lug width here. So how you set the date is uh, as follows. Basically, as you go past midnight, the date snaps into place. What do you want to do now? You want to go past 1, then you want to go past 11, backwards, and now you can snap into place. 
Mm. And again. And so forth. Actually, sorry, you don't even need to go past 1. You can just go uh, past midnight and then go back to 11. And then go past midnight again. And so forth until you get to your date. A little bit annoying, a little bit of a hassle. Date windows on a lot of watches are a bit of a hit or miss. On some watches it works really well, on others it doesn't, especially a lot of chronograph watches. Because their dials already are overly saturated, they're very busy dials, adding a date window can ruin the design. I think on this watch it works really well. It's integrated there by the 6 o'clock position, has a nice border around the window. And I think it looks pretty good. Not too much writing on this dial either. It has Paliot written by the 6 o'clock position. And 23 Kamiya, or 23 Jules, 23 Stones, written closer to the 6 o'clock position. And yes, I am fluent in Russian, that's why I can say it and read it in Russian. So overall, the design to me personally of this watch is very strong. I really, really like it. I like the applied indices for hour marks, even little loom pips. Believe it or not, the loom still works. It works really well. Even the triangle on the bezel is loomed. Here's a loom shot for you, of course. It doesn't last for a very long time. It's not something that you'll be overly impressed with, but overall the loom is pretty good. That was the review part of the video. Now let's talk about my feelings, my experience towards the watch. So it's been about three months. Initially, I was really happy to add it to my collection. I also got it cleaned and serviced right away. And now this watchmaker is great for affordable timepieces. I wouldn't take my Rolex to him. I wouldn't take an Omega to him, but a watch like this, a watch that costs a couple hundred bucks, he will do a great job and he's very affordable. So he only charged me $100 to clean the watch as well as to fix a small issue with the chronograph. Initially, when I just unboxed the watch, the chronograph was resetting perfectly to zero every single time. However, when you get a new watch, you're excited, you start playing with it, you start resetting the chronograph a little bit too much. And as the time went on, the more I reset the chronograph, the more it started moving forward. So it was forward about 30 seconds, so it was slightly off of that zero position. Then it was off about a minute, then about two minutes. So I took it to the watchmaker and decided to get it cleaned at the same time. I paid 120 Canadian dollars. So that's about what? About 80 US dollars, somewhere around there. So very affordable for what it is. If I took it to a different watchmaker, a more expensive watchmaker, probably would cost me double or triple that because cleaning and servicing chronograph movements is difficult and time consuming. I've had about three months with this watch. I've had it in my collection, on my wrist, in the watch box, wore it a bunch of different times, throughout different occasions, and uh, I love it. I love this watch, however, however. It's kind of difficult to explain, but basically, I don't have as much of a draw to wear this watch as I do some of the other watches. And I don't think it's to do with the price, because uh, really price is not as important, it's more how you feel about the watch. And this one here, it's more of a collection timepiece as opposed to wearing it on your wrist type of a watch. Uh, maybe it doesn't make sense, but it was one of those watches that I really wanted to buy, I really wanted to have, but now that I have it, I don't really want to sell it, but I also don't have as much draw towards wearing it. It's a beautiful watch, I still love it, it's just not the watch that I reach out to wear a lot. I'm curious to see how it will evolve over the upcoming months. Am I going to be more likely to reach for this watch or is it going to be even less likely to reach for the watch and it's just going to sit in my watch box and maybe one day I'll even consider selling it. As of right now, I don't think I'm going to sell it, uh, but maybe in the future. I don't know. I, it's not that I'm disappointed with the watch. I think the watch did everything great. It's everything that I expected the watch to be. It's just, uh, I, I don't think I connected with the watch as much as I wanted to. Uh, maybe given more time, it will happen as of right now. I love it. I love that I have it in my collection, but I don't wear it as often. I appreciate you watching this video until the end. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can see more videos like this and so we can make more videos like this one in the future. And leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this Poliot Sturmanskia. And do you have any watches that initially you were really excited about buying, but after you bought it, you didn't really want to sell it, you weren't really disappointed with the watch, but you didn't really connect with it and you weren't really drawn to wearing that timepiece. 
leave those comments below, I always enjoy reading them. By the way, today I'm a wrist, I'm wearing a Rolex Explorer, I did a full review of this watch as well as my buying experience of this watch, both of those videos will be linked in the description below. Also in the description below there are two other links, the first link is a secret link, have a look if you're curious, the second link is a link to bondnatostraps.com, if you're looking for a good quality NATO strap and want to support this YouTube channel at the same time, buying one of these NATO straps is a great way to do so. Thanks for watching, I hope you're staying safe, I hope you had fun, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. There you go, buddy. Woke you up from your nap for this. At least you get a snack. What's the deal?